Thanks for being along. Good to have you. Here's the headline from the Toronto Star. The condo market right now is a ghost town. Toronto has a record number of units for sale. Here's why they aren't selling despite a housing crisis. Well, he's not only a sponsor of the show, Frank Leo, Frank Leo of Frank Leo and Associates is often our go-to to talk to about these kinds of issues. Frank, good morning. Good morning, Jerry. Is that headline uh, kind of on the right track here? Or are people hesitant on condos right now? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's a lot of... Uh you know, realization that the people who bought four or five years ago and now are, are, can't close on their condos and they're losing money, then it's not always that you make money in real estate. And so people are now more cautious. Well, I, that's always been the case of people thought that you always make money on real estate, and especially in Toronto. I mean, I've had people over the 15 years or so that I've been here just tell me, yeah, it's really impossible for many, many people to get into the housing market. But once you're in, it's just a license to print money. Right. And, and th that's the problem, Jerry, because a lot of the people who bought went back then, three, four, five years ago, they weren't buying to move in because they needed the property. They were buying as an investment. And so they were hoping it would appreciate and hopefully to sell the paper and not even move in at all. All right. Well, houses are improving in value, are they not? Houses improving in value? Well, houses, I mean, there's a demand for properties in Toronto and the GTA. There's not enough homes being built. So right. the, the, the supply is still not there. The condos have more uh, that are available because more people purchased four and five years ago, and now they're, they're, they're having problems. A home sale is typically a lot shorter. So if you're buying a brand new home, it's only nine months to a year before you get it. Okay, but with, with a condo, is there good news here for somebody, people who are saying, well, I just can't afford to buy a home. If condos aren't selling, I would, then prices are going to go down. Could it get to a point where somebody would say, hey, the condo's not very big, but at least I can get into the market? Absolutely. It's going to put some downward pressure on the condos if this many condos are not being sold and they're more available. The people who own them have to you know, capture some of the money, otherwise they're going to be in trouble. So yes, absolutely. They'll go down until they sell them. Councillor Gord Perks is chair of the City of Toronto's Planning and Housing Committee. He said something is wrong with the market when we have housing nobody wants and homelessness at the same time. That's an interesting comment. Well, it's become less affordable from, from an interest rate perspective when they went up 2,000% from 0.25 to 5%. Now they went down. They're in the right direction that last uh, last week by 0.25%. But we're still way above what they were before, so it's very hard to, to qualify. But the fact is that a builder, to build a brand new condo right now, they're looking at, according to the article, $1,500 per square foot. The resales are selling around 1000 per square foot, so the builders can't even build. The irony is that there's no more new homes being built where we need more inventory or product of homes available for for people to be moving into, and yet the ones that are available are out of people's price range because of the interest rates. Is the size of a condo a part of the problem? Uh, of course. I mean, when you're building for single single people, uh, and now we are in a situation where one person is having a hard time affording that property, we're getting into multi-generational homes or people you know, living together to being able to afford these properties. You can't do that in a very small space. Another number that's in this article, Frank Leo, Frank Leo and Associates is with me, and we're talking about an article in the Toronto Star, which tells us that condos just aren't selling, and um, they talk about about the numbers here, the highest number of condos for sale for any month in recent history in May with 8,183 apartment units on the market. The last highest number of active condo listings was back in October of 2020 at 7,600. Like I would just think, Frank, that if I wanted to buy a condo, I could call you and say, uh, let's just go out there and, and murder somebody, so to speak. Like, let's just uh, lowball the heck out of them here. Well, you know, there are more condos, but overall, there's not enough properties for sale. So, you know, there's there's a certain amount of uh, of anticipation that th there's going to be a better market. People are hanging on. They're doing their best to hang on. And so we haven't seen that. But if it continues this way and people can't have, hang on, then they're going to have to reduce the price as much as they need to to get it sold. Well, the number that we talk about a lot and that you hear people talking about, it's a million or it's a million one or something just to get into the housing market in uh, the GTA. But the average list price right now they say for condos is 593,000 that's still a lot of money but it's sure significantly different than talking about the neighborhood of a million 
Well, but you're also talking about 500 to 600 square feet. I yeah, mean, that's that's a small space. I mean, some of these homes have closets that are bigger than that. So, uh, you know, you, is that where we're going? Is that where people want to live? Can they afford to live on their own with the, the cost of the mortgage plus the maintenance fees, et cetera? A two car garage is about 400 square feet. Is that right? Uh, 20 by 20. Yeah, sure. If it's 20 by 20. Okay. Garage, yeah. Okay. So a two car garage, 20 by 20, so 400 square feet. And you're talking about a condo that's maybe five or 600 feet. So you just envision it that way. Certainly it is small, but on the other hand, it's entry into the market too. If you're a, a younger person and you've got a job, uh, is this a good way to go? It is, but you know you can't have a roommate or someone else helping you with the cost. So that's why the smaller ones are probably having the big issues because it's harder to afford for one person. If you had a little bit bigger and you had an extra bedroom, you could split the cost, and that would be something that would be more affordable. Affordability, I think, is a big issue with uh, with what we're dealing with right now. Well, you had mentioned that uh, if it costs fifteen hundred dollars a square foot to get a condo building up and sold in Toronto right now, and they're selling them for a thousand per square foot, I, I can see where there's an issue. If you're a developer, but the and and we don't have enough building, but we have a lot of building still going on. Well, those are the ones that sold pre pre this 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 shift. So they're finishing off what they sold. But the new sales, if you look at the article, are way down. Something like seventy uh, percent or eighty percent. I forgot where it was, but a uh, huge decrease in the amount of pre construction sales. So. No new ones are being built, and eventually, this if we don't uh, have more inventory, this inventory will have to be gobbled up, and it, it will get back to a situation where we're you know, low supply. One of the things that I would fear going into buying a condo that hasn't been built yet, and I wonder if this is the case, Frank, and that is, oh, I bought this condo for $450,000, and I can't wait. And then when they finally get it built six or seven years down the road, they go, yeah, the market value now is 800000 and I have to pay that. Well, no, you have a contract, and, and that, that shouldn't happen. But what did happen is I, I bought a condo for $400,000, and my monthly payment was going to be you know, 1500 And then now, because the rates went up, and now it's 3500 So now you're not prepared for that. That did happen. So although the price was the same, the monthly payment was not because the interest rate changed. So it's not just one factor that you have to look at. The financing is a huge aspect, and a lot of people right now don't realize that the banks and financial institutions are being very critical and very cautious with their lending. All right, we'll end with this text message, Frank, that just came in, and I don't know whether you can use it or not, but somebody, when we were talking about the size of the condo, somebody just wrote in and pointed out that a Toyota Camry is 100 square feet. Well, we hope people don't start living in those, right? <laughs> well, some people may be, in fact be doing that. Um, Frank Leo, uh, Frank Leo and Associates, thanks very much. Have a great day, Jerry. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Have a great weekend. Jim Richards joins me next on Party for Two on the iHeartRadio Talk Network.